One of the most common things on the internet lately are relationship advice, but in this video, I'm going to share with you some relationship advice that no one has ever told you. Buckle up, you might just be surprised. Let's dive in. The first one is that love is not enough. To all my helpless romantics, <laughs> this is not to spoil anything for you, but trust me, you see that big, 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 big way they feel for your heart. It's not be love. <laughs> Not be that one go carry you through the relationship. If you ask me, I'll say only 30% is what love contributes to the success of every relationship. Sometimes people actually misinterpret attraction for love. You know that feelings you have when you see that person, those butterflies in your tummy, all of those things. Those are actually attractions. Contrary to what most people think, love is a conscious decision to choose someone every day of your life till the end of time. That is just what it is. It is a decision. You decide to choose someone. You decide to love someone. You decide to be there for someone every day, regardless of what happens. But the attraction you have for that person is what makes you feel all of those things in your body. And that is not bad, right? You need to have some level of attraction physically for that person before you marry them, right? But then attraction and love, the feeling of all of that is not enough. There are certain questions you should be asking, like what is their values? How do they treat themselves? How do they treat other people? Do our ambitions align? Are our goals and visions for the future align? Because, I mean, you can marry someone who is thinking right and you're maybe thinking left, if that makes any sense, right? Your goals and ambitions need to align. It doesn't necessarily have to be that you're chasing the same thing, but you know, holistically, it has to be that your ambitions align. You need to agree together because even the bible says it that can two work together except of course they be agreed there has to be some kind of harmony between you two harmony in your perspectives towards life the way you view life in general Kids. furthermore relationships die when you do not communicate communication like they say is the lifeblood of every healthy relationship if you're the type that is saying that oh my beg i no get time for plenty talk i can't imagine you know calling someone every day on the phone what are they calling for once in a week is okay or once in two weeks is okay then i'm sorry sir i'm sorry ma you're not ready to be in a relationship because when you decide to go into a relationship with someone it's like you saying okay i'm going to make room for you no matter how private you are or no matter how introverted you are, sometimes you just have to make space, make room for the other person. So if you're like, no, I can't be talking on the phone every day now, or I can't want to see you every time now, then maybe you should just still be in a relationship with yourself because obviously you're in a relationship with yourself. If you don't communicate, if you don't no talk, you don't see each other, how will we fit to understand each other? Because the fact that you started dating does not mean that you're going to immediately marry the person, right? Most times you need to like, you know, learn the person, understand the person somehow, at least to some extent. Although there are exceptions anyway, because recently I was even listening to a podcast and the lady was like, as soon as her dad met her mom, he just told her outrightly, babe, I won't marry you. <laughs> you don't ready to marry and he doesn't even want to listen to the fact that she was saying she has a boyfriend somewhere he was just like i want to marry you when are you taking me to see your parents he was just that so you know bold and everything and after two months they were married and they are still married till date so you know there are exceptions in every rule but generally speaking most times when you meet someone you have to you know take the time to learn them understand them and that entails communication that entails texting, calling on the phone, trying to make out time to see each other. That is what it takes. Among some of the relationship advice that are so rampant on the internet lately, you hear some coaches telling people that when you meet someone, don't call them, don't rush to pick their call, you know, let them call you like four or five times or even 10 times before you pick, you know, all of those things. And I keep wondering, like, what difference does it really make? I mean, what is the essence of this whole mind game? You're going to call me for like 10 times before I pick up so I don't appear like I'm desperate or maybe like say they rush you, they rush you. Or maybe you as a man, you're waiting for like 48 hours before you now initiate a call. I think it's just needless mind games. My parents were married for over 45 years. I mean, I have never seen a relationship like that before. I am still looking. When my mom came to do a mugo for me for my first child, she hasn't even stayed up to two weeks and my dad was already calling. 
I know well, oh, I'm feeling sick. When are you coming back? When are you coming back? Like, these were people who, when they met back then, there was nothing like phone, there was nothing like texting, you know, all of those things, no day. And yet, I look at them and I'm like, wow, I never see this kind of relationship. Oh, you, you won't even catch them fighting or any of those things. And you keep wondering, does it mean that they didn't have bad days? Of course. They were bad days. I am a living witness that they were bad days. But you know, in the midst of all of that, their relationship is something that I will never forget. If you like girl, call her. You know, text her. I'm not saying you should be excessively overbearing, you know, calling her every minute. That would be like insane, right? But make the effort. You self, maybe woman, the form say, you know, I'm picked the first three, five, seven times. So often I did the form who go first call, who go first speak. And you know, time they pass. Because what you have from that first stage is attraction. The next thing you need to do is to build on that attraction so you can get to a point where you can now say, yes, we are ready emotionally, physically, and you know, otherwise. And that takes me to the next point, which is you have to be ready emotionally, physically, mentally. Very important. Some people only focus on the monetary aspect. You hear things that, ah, I want marry now, money now, now, money now. You keep hustling money, hustling money. Money is not all you need to have a good marriage. If it were all you need, then you wouldn't have some very rich people divorcing. Does that make any sense? Because in fact, it can't be like you said, people they divorce pass this day, now people even get money pass. You never think um, you know, that is to tell you that all you need is not money. You need to work on yourself. You need to work on your mental state, work on your emotional state. Some of us are just too emotional. You know, things just get to us so easily before you know a person don't go from zero to hundred. You know, I used to be very emotional before now. And, you know, I had a very major paradigm shift in my life that I am so grateful to God for. Ever since I had that paradigm shift, eh, my thinking have changed. You know, everything about me has completely changed. Now I see things differently. You know, you can't easily even get to me as much as you could before. Because now I choose the things that I want to affect me. If you there is a say maybe you want to do all that, it go make me veg. Don't waste your time because <laughs> when the way you know before, not be the when the way they talk now. I have really been able to grow past a lot of things. So you have to be ready. You need to get to a certain age where you'll be able to handle certain things. Because this marriage with the rush go and time says so. Let me say that every day na jolly jolly. And this is not to say that uh, people should not get married because it's always a struggle. It's not always a struggle. It's when you marry wrong. That it becomes a struggle. To me, I'll say it's one of the most enjoyable things on earth if you marry the right person. If you marry someone who is ready to grow and evolve and learn and unlearn. That is what it means to marry the right person. Because you know, nobody they already finish. We know they already finish. No matter how much you prepare, when you don't enter that journey, that is when you discover a whole lot of things. But the ability for you to adjust, learn, unlearn is what makes the difference. So if you're able to get that person who is willing to grow continuously, then that is when I would say you married right. Because in your ability to grow and evolve is what will make you be able to cope with certain decisions or certain circumstances that you never planned for. That leads me to the next one. Looks and attraction is not all that matters. Some people will just say, okay, I don't meet this fine babe. Ah, that babe, fine. I share one marry. There is nothing bad in that i mean i believe you should marry someone you are attracted to that has the looks that you want but then it is not all that it takes attraction is going to bring you to that point looks is going to bring you to that point but what is going to keep you is not the looks is not the attraction you feel because that attraction can fade over time that is why in marriage people do what we call spicing up of things every now and then you try to go on vacation do one or two things you know couple up again so that i be able to rekindle that attraction you have for each other like i said Attraction is not love. Attraction is that feeling you have for that person. Sometimes it fades away, but you know, with constant working on yourself, being able to spice up things, especially in the other room and every other thing, it will keep the attraction alive. It is good to go after that thing you want, that thing you cherish, that fineness you see, that attraction you have, but just be rest assured that you need more than looks. You need more than attraction to be able to thrive in this our institution of marriage, okay? For the 
Furthermore, as powerful as God is, we need to agree with him before things can happen in our lives. What do I mean by that? Let's say you're a brother in church and you know the Lord's leading you towards a lady. You don't see him for your dream. You don't pray about him. You just like say, Baba God, he tell you, say, now your wife be that. And then with that understanding, you walk up to the lady one day and you tell her that, Sister, I think God is leading me to you, telling me that you're going to be my wife. Can you pray about it? And the sister outrightly there and then tells you no. That she's not even there willing to pray about herself. She just say no. I mean, maybe she don't look, say, you know, be her type or whatever. Now, would you stay in that position and keep praying and hoping that the sister gets a change of mind? Absolutely no. Because in as much as God is showing you these things, if the sister does not agree, it means that it will not happen. So what it means is that you have to move on, my brother. You have to move on. Keep praying to God and let God lead you to another person. Yes. Let God lead you to another person. Because you're not going to waste your time. They rose too. Or you're not going to start deceiving yourself, being nice to her, buying perfect, buying shawarma, buying all those things, spending your money that you don't have. Later, later, when you come to say the lady won't marry, you go begin to swear the cause. Not go to swear for another person picking no. God will bless her and God will bless you. Do not do that. Okay, if she's saying no, get the message on time and move on. This is a harsh truth, okay? Especially when you're really attracted to that sister, you really just want her and the kind of woman who you want. But then she is not agreeing to your will. So you have to move on and God will definitely lead you to the person that will be your wife for real. As I said before, you can never be completely ready for marriage before you get married. No matter how you prepare, you can always get some things that will shock you. When you go see like this, you'll be like, ah, and I saw this thing be. But then if you're not married yet and you intend to get married in the nearest future, some of these things will actually help you prepare. While you're preparing and you're looking at that person, do not ignore red flags. Just because you have this notion or this thinking that, eh, the person go change now, we go change them. There is no changing of anybody. Nobody fit change for you. They're not the change. If, for example, you're looking for someone who is going to be the priest of the household, a man who is prayerful, who is spiritual, as a woman, that is what you want. And then you meet this guy, he ticks up every other box, but that one, you know, they like to pray. You know, they like to do things of God. He's not just spiritually inclined, like some people will say. Then... Is it that you decide to stay there or not? Don't think that eh, maybe when you get married to him, you'll be able to convince him and turn him into that um, priest that you've always wanted him to be. You know they work like that too. Most of the time, it doesn't work. You're just going to stress yourself out. So if you think it's something you can live with, because one thing with red flags is that there are things that I might see as like a very, very big red flag. Like if I see them like this, they're for me in a turn off. I don't go there again. But for some persons, they will tell you that, okay, this, I can manage it. I can live with it. So if there are things that you think that you can live with, just be aware and know that these things might not change. Watch out for first impressions. People can pretend for so long. Okay, that is even why it's good to date for a little bit before you get married. Although some people can pretend. Now, when you don't enter finish, you'll come see some kind of things. You'll be like, what? It will be more painful if you saw some red flags, if you saw some signs and decided to turn a blind eyes to them just because you feel that the person would change along the line. So even if you don't take anything from this video when I record so, eh, just take these two things. Love is not enough and you cannot change anybody my name is wendy zil thank you so much for watching if you like this video if it is of value to you please don't forget to give it a like subscribe if you have not done so yet and also check out this video on the screen where i talked about marriage and money how you can handle finances and marriage because like they say until money matter is settled the marriage might never be settled i'll see you there